welcome back to the Punk Record Podcast. I'm Matt. I'm Cody. And today we're here to remind you that kangaroos cannot jump backwards. Snapple facts. Today we are are honored to be joined by Patricia and Dan, the creators of My Gal the Zombie, and Dan's also doing the coloring on the new Nightmare Before Christmas comic. Welcome, guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank thank you for coming on. And Patricia does coloring on it with me as well, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah, nice. Exciting. I do kind of like the flat base colors, and then yeah. I give it to him, and he works all of the magic. And when he finishes a page, it's just, <laughs> it's breathtaking. Nice. Your time. Cool. Your time. <laughs> this. Aw. It's so magical. It's such a good time over here. <laughs> it's just, just talk. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so today's pretty, like, a very pretty relaxed day. We're just going to talk about horror and literature and comics and really just delve into it. So before we get to that, let's talk about My Gal the Zombie. So well, what is My Gal the Zombie? Exactly. You can answer. I like your answer. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, whenever someone asks us that at a convention, I'll say, oh, it's kind of like a mix between like Archie meets Bewitched meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, And it's just a very good wholesome comic what Dan and I really like doing is family friendly products so Mm -hmm. everybody can enjoy them right and uh, we really love just kind of like that Archie aesthetic where it's kind of like you're in this very simple small town and the big Mm -hmm. things that happen are kind of interpersonal relationships and Chelsea's feelings are I think like literally the heart of the comic Um, a lot of times when people write stuff for using zombies um they use zombies as a metaphor for something and when i write my stories for my gal i use the zombie virus as a metaphor for depression okay Okay. um so with uh my stories with my gal i really like making these small little moments chelsea has and really shining lights on them to show sort of how big how profound how much they can really hit a person in the gut um so. No, I, that's that's a very like unique way to take that on because I mean, yeah. usually yeah. when people go with the zombie virus story, it's, mm-hmm. they usually will go as deep as oh to show the you know profanity and you know extreme that humanity is willing to go to. Yeah. You don't have really anyone see it take on take it on and put it in a version in a light that actually takes on something more serious, yeah. like you just said, like depression. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's usually yeah. something like a lot of people don't touch on a whole lot in pop culture or anything. So it's like really cool. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was kind of where like when I first started doing that, um, that was where the initial influence came from. Anyway, I actually it's been five years since I started doing it, and then Patricia's been involved with it for most of that time. So, um, so I've actually I noticed that it's been five years since then, and it's been five years for me in life since I had some different life changes and um, Mm -hmm. and a lot of it was vocational Um, I actually lived not too far from here at all and I would drive on six to go into town and then I would I would uh, I would go work at a place that I don't work at anymore and um, and so I was really trying to reconcile that um, and then uh, and then I ended up having another job for a while that also was kind of tricky all the while I was doing the comics and so I'm really glad that I've been able to um, really get things on track, I guess just whether life-wise or professionally, like I'm able to do the things that I used to be able to do. And so it also gives me a different approach on the uh, on the comics, but it's very much, like at that point I was going through a lot of depression. And um, not that I don't still, but that was a time that I was really, really in a low place. And, um, and so since then, actually, um, it looks like I've, uh, I, or t- to me, it's more like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a, something called complex PTSD, which is a little bit uh-huh. different from like going to war. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, uh, so I really tried to, and the, actually with the last, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever write another, <laughs> like a zombie story again, cause Rikisha does really good. But the last story that I, <laughs> I wrote, um, <laughs> was the the one that i'd been putting off which is like the origin story um right and so that kind of delves a little bit more into like a post-traumatic stress sort of thing um but it it really uh that that's that's kind of what the the story's been about was 
whatever whatever sort of outlier of society you might be, whether it's I don't know something that that to the other, whatever the other is for you, which I think everybody is to some degree. Um, w- with that, you know, that's what she is. She's she's um, in in that world. Zombies are point zero one percent of the population, so that would be uh, that would be a tenth of one percent. So I think that's like one out of every. We're bringing some math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. So so it's not something like where everybody's a zombie. It's something where like it's known like that there are people that have yeah. this virus, which is kind of like a a stronger version of a a radiated infection. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's known, but it's like it's something where like maybe not everybody knows a zombie, but maybe their friend does. And so like she might try to go to a place, and they're like, no, you're not welcome in here because you're sick. So okay, you can't okay. be here, or no, we won't hire you for this job because of your illness. So you like you really do talk about kind of like prejudices, yeah, within the story. So like, yeah, it sounds like you guys kind of have like a good like melting pot of a lot of issues that that's you really the goal. take on. Like yeah, that's, that's that's really exciting to see because it's like when it comes to horror. And by the way, you're totally like in your niche with us here with the whole weirdo <laughs> yeah. loser group. Like we are <laughs> used to, <laughs> we're used to being losers. It's okay. Okay. I found it. I, I found it a literal tree in a in a middle school called the loser tree. Oh. I was the president. That's pretty good. It was a small club. I stayed away from the tree. <laughs> The, the tree. <laughs> the tree was weird. It like was actually it was an actual tree in the shape of an L, so that's why I called it. Oh. Tree. Yeah. Yeah. If so. it makes you feel better, I had a detective club in high school, and there was two members. It was myself and my older brother. That and is awesome. We would meet after school. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we never had cool. those clubs Sherlock at our school Holmes. at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if there was a detective, sc- are you kidding me? There's a detective club. I would have been on that. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I try to not remember most of those years that I was in high school. So <laughs> no, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just abstain. <laughs> Which is weird because it's like when high you have... High school's overblown anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just as a society, for some reason, we put so much importance and so much focus in high school. But at the same time, it's like, oh, all these high schoolers are sophisticated. Like right. in Riverdale, you have Veronica Lodge in one of the first episodes of season two sit down with like a mimosa. And it's like, girl, you are 16 years old. Yeah. No, it's like, home. wait a minute, I couldn't do that in high school. Yeah. yeah, so it's just, we have this weird romanticized version of high school. Where it's yeah. not really high school, it's more like 20-somethings. But yeah, okay. I, that is more like, like they do yeah. operate more like college students. So I've, I've got a couple ideas about right. that. But no, yeah. offense, no offense, they don't. They act like high school students if anybody's hearing this. Hey, look, this is, the, <laughs> this is the rule we go with on this podcast, <laughs> is that if you're tuning in to get offended, it's your fault. Yeah, so. We've said some pretty offensive people, stuff. People are well aware of what we're talking about. You should, you should hear our first episodes where we uh, yeah. I went off on, like, Bon Jovi and vaccination deniers. There's, like, almost no boundaries okay. here. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so and Iron Fist. Iron, Iron Fist is the Iron Fist so, is the Oh yeah, I went on a huge rant about why people hate Iron Fist. Do not get me started. It was I I know that's why I liked it. Did did you not like Iron Fist? No, I loved it. Me too. I loved it. It was a good show. It's a better show. I like the I like the character. The show wasn't any good, but I like the character. (laughs) (laughs) I'm joking. joking. The show the show is good. good. My opinion is that it's a better Green Arrow. Like Hmm. I mean, like the CW Green Arrow, not the comics. You know how the CW Green Arrow is. Okay, don't. <laughs> okay, I love um, Arrow. I'm, I would recommend it. Gets, it. it gets pre- it's, it, the first, like, four seasons are solid. Like, they're pretty solid. But, like, so, so, I don't get st- <laughs> so I don't get started with a whole rant again. This is why I will say it's better. So, what Iron Fist does is that they touch on his PTSD and his flashbacks. Yeah. What Arrow does is that there's literally flashbacks within four seasons. And then there's flashbacks within a flashback. Yeah, there's a flashback within a flashback. 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 Even though they could do, like, just totally just do, like, (laughs) Arrow's flashbacks within two seasons. And they just drag it out. My critique with the Iron Fist show is the same critique with all the Netflix shows, is that I just think they're too long sometimes. Right. I think that they could have served it better and not as many. Because, I mean, you're looking at, like, what, 10, 12? hours plus for these shows yeah yeah and then my second critique is the way that patsy walker is handled but that's an entirely oh. <laughs> that's yeah. just personal we have, 
I mean, yeah, we could sure this is an episode where we take apart our comic love and like <laughs> get mad at people that ruin it. What I'll say is Patsy Walker is one of the longest running, most established characters in Marvel. Oh yeah. To, like, oh yeah. Captain America. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're, so, you're talking to me. Two yeah. Marvel fans are here. Captain I mean, America's my favorite. I got Loki. <laughs> oh, right that's here. cool. Yeah. So. But but yeah, I'm just like I I'm I'm holding out. I think she's gonna. I had hope. Jessica Jones for where she was headed, and right. I just don't I, watch season two. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's that's season two gave me <laughs> the end of season two gave me hope. Uh, really, I would say I've, I've everyone I've talked what to. What have we started? I know <laughs> everyone I've talked to, like all my friends, or anything that love the Netflix show, say don't watch season two of Jessica Jones. Yeah, what? I see that was all, so good. You're the only person I've heard say they liked it. It's I did the only because person. she it's finally. Go ahead. It's a really good season, but they totally ruined Trish Walk. No, I think they did finally they? started well, to make her gonna right. She's going to be Hellcat. That she's I'm excited for, and I hope she redeems herself in the third season. But she's so selfish, and she's the exact mm. opposite of what she was in the first season. So I mean, but that's heart. the point, though, because in the first season, she finally breaks the self, like the, or she can't be as she's going to be more selfish, like. Because throughout the first entire season, she's super selfless. She's like the opposite of Jessica Jones. And then Jessica like was teaching her like you need to be you need to be more selfish and stuff like that. That's and true. so now she's gonna be super mm. overballed in this season. And then season three, like she's gonna fi- finally find that mixture, kind of like Jessica Jones did in The Defenders, where she wasn't as much of a, a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did not care for the first season of Je- Jessica Jones until like until yeah. Kilgrave was in, uh, involved. Ugh. I David love Tennant it. is the best and as the Doctor and as Kilgrave. So, so bring it back. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Bring it back. Yeah, bring it back. Do you it. ever want to have like an Iron Fist throwdown though? Like <laughs> I have all of the original Power Man and Iron Fist run. I have the original fifteen See, issue I've, run. I've always Iron wanted to get an Iron, Iron Fist comic. Yeah, no, she I always like wanted to get into his yeah. comics, but I could never <laughs> find his comics. It's the same like issue that I yeah, had with like Punisher and stuff. I have to I have to hunt down Punisher comics, and that pisses me off so much. Yeah, the original superhero. Ed Ghost Rider. All right. So coming back, so <laughs> so what is the story of my gal, the zombie? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a good question because very similar to Patsy Walker, um, there's a lot of influence there. She was a she was a teen humor character, a teen romance character for decades before okay. she ever got ever got superpowers. Um, okay. And so it's kind of like if Archie had, I mean, she was very much the same sort of character as, as Archie. And if she was used, um, and then became a superhero, and so, um, so that yeah, that's essentially what it, what it was. So I had been doing, I did one story of this character of another comic I was doing, and I did one story where she was a zombie, and people liked it, and it kind of took off, and then I really enjoyed doing that. So, um, so then, um, let me see. So she becomes a zombie, and I didn't really allude to why, and then uh, or how too much. And I did some stories where. You know, she would basically, for me, it was more like, be, like, I love Bewitched. That's one of, I think, the greatest shows that there's been on, on uh, in television. And so there was a lot of influence from that. And, uh, and but my thought was, well, if it was a zombie instead of a witch. So I did a number of stories like that where she still had her friends. Like, this wasn't the thing where her friends were, like, like turned their back on her. Right. Um, and there were a variety of different things. I mean, she would... There was some where she would, uh, you know, have conflict with an, another person that was um, not a standard human, um, and so, so I did th- those stories, which I think were they weren't necessarily action stories, but they were more humor stories um, that dealt kind of like Bewitched, you know, that had some conflict in it, but very sitcommy. And okay. then, uh, and then Patricia started writing. What was it? I think it was like few years ago and I didn't know that you wanted to write comics and so you mentioned that and I was like well here just start writing this <laughs> <laughs> well um, it's just I've always wanted to write comics but I was so scared because there is a format you need to use it's sort of like a little bit like script writing mm-hmm. and I had to teach myself yeah, it's how like to a script. do it is it and mm-hmm. so, so it's not I'm sorry I don't mean to interrupt oh, no. I, I was just going to say <laughs> I was just going to ask so then how much of a difference is it between writing for a comic essay is writing for a fictional book completely different they're completely different mediums um yeah. how i okay. do it it's like first you have to envision the page like how you kind of want the panels to look and then you go panel one description and then you do like dialogue panel two description dialogue and you have to do it to the point where the artist knows okay this is what the writer wants this is how it's supposed to look um 
Mm-hmm. So you have to be very familiar with comics to even right. know mm-hmm. how to sort of well, do it. And it's Dan so was very supportive and was just like, no, just play with it. You know? Yeah. So, so is that yeah, how you guys play. work? Is that uh, you work off her writing or yeah. does she work off your art mostly? A bit of both, actually. Yeah, really? I'd, say, I'd say a bit of both. So two or three fold on that. First, I want to echo, she spoke the exact truth. Um, there's a writer of like a thing that's people apparently he's like really like I knew he was kind of known but he's like like a lot of people really like his stuff okay and so um, so I was at a signing at a Barnes and Noble that was they were just getting some other people because he was doing a signing and um, I don't know who he is like I don't I just know that like people like his stuff I think he has a TV show or something but I don't know nothing about him so or anything about him and so I heard him talking about he was writing comics of his characters and then they were saying they're like you're writing this like for your novels not like a comic and they're like you can't write it like that and so they were all kind of laughing about that and there was a big like a huge crowd like the store was packed um with with his fans and that was a good thing um and i was just like this is ridiculous i was like you have to know that and so i would say that writing a comic is as different as writing a novel as it is as doing a painting i would say it's uh, it's no more similar to write i mean there's words, you know, but yeah. it, it's most similar to like a Shakespeare script. Though. Yeah, I don't even mean like a script, like a modern script necessarily. I mean like a Shakespeare script that's published and written at this point. I mean they do it to, to act it out, but but people just read those. There's many people who will read Shakespeare in school, but may never see a play, and so it has all the stage direction and all of that. And a good comic strip has that. A script has that. A poor comic script doesn't. A poor comic script is if someone doesn't understand the medium you can read a comic script like that and they're not poor they're not bad reads they're not poor reads if you do that but it's not how it's i mean shakespeare scripts were intended to be viewed as a play and since then they've been published um and so i would also echo that when patricia first started doing scripts i was like goodness i was like she like knows the format and a lot of people don't Uh, and you have like, there are people who don't write scripts. There are people who just draw. There are people who just sketch right. it out. There's every, there's no, like, there's no, like, rule that you have, like, some publisher would be like, well, if you didn't use t- a 10-point t- font and you didn't have a quarter, <laughs> you know, you didn't have an inch margin. Calibri, um, what is this? <laughs> yeah, there, there's nothing like, it doesn't matter. You can have a script on napkins. Like, it doesn't matter as long as you can make the final product. But depending on if it's a collaboration, like if you're gonna write a script and you're gonna send it to a publisher and you want them to get sent it to an artist that you may never meet or talk with after you submit the script, yeah. then you have to have something that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But honestly, like more than I had anticipated, Patricia can speak that language that a lot of people can't speak and you can't really hey. learn. No, no, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you can't really learn that. Like some people it's like, okay, figure it out. Like take a couple decades to do it, but you have to, I think it does take a couple decades, and if you didn't start those decades when you were nine, then you're not going to be able to do it when you're 19 or 29. It's not going to happen. You have to understand the format, and um, and so yeah, I think you kind of have to understand that. But no, Patricia understands it really well because I was like, wait a second, what? Like I was like, how have you not written other things for 10 years, like other comic scripts? <laughs> and then you mentioned like that you had specifically studied. Scott McCloud and stuff like that and that's the difference because all the tricks that like people write books about whether it's you know um, I mean whether it's Scott McCloud or or Stanley and John Buscema or the DC guide or Eisner's guide to to what you do to write comics you kind of if you don't know that stuff like you can write comics it doesn't matter you can do it mm-hmm. but they just don't come off well I mean you can have a very you can have a very good narrative but if it's not suited to comics that's when the the fan boys and girls start tweeting about how bad you are <laughs> and, <laughs> and, Nick Spencer uh, well, <laughs> I, and oh, they're, they're calling you out there's Sorry. truth to that <laughs> I should be that. writing Captain America not you Nick Spencer well don't worry he's writing he's writing Archie now I haven't no. talked about that with you yet <laughs> yeah he's writing Archie now so um so but the new Betty and Veronica looks good okay, I say good. that Betty and Veronica uh, you know looks good Okay, <laughs> so so let's, so let's tap into that a little bit. Let's tap yeah. into not only what inspires you guys when it comes to writing like Alpha Zombie yeah. and how you guys came up with the idea to create it, uh, but let's also talk about how you guys met. 
and like how you joined up in Team Forces to write yeah. this badass comic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess let's start from there. How did you guys sure. meet? Well, I remember when Trisha, when you worked at um, TradeSmart. So, because you had bought some comics from me a couple times, <laughs> and then I ripped you off. No, actually, more than a couple of times. Probably not. No, I got way more trade smart than I ever thought. Like the first really? opening day, I brought like all this stuff. I was like, I'm gonna get like ten dollars. I got like a hundred dollars. <laughs> I was like, man, they are not staying in business that long. And they stayed, <laughs> they stayed, in, stayed in business a lot longer than I expected. Oh. Um, I but, laughed so much when they closed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no regrets. There's a second in Charles in that same location now. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 They're yeah. actually opening one up in uh, yeah. Fort Collins. Are they? Second yeah. in Charles is amazing. <laughs> I love that place. They did Fried Pie Con and we were Yeah, it was there. really good. Oh, cool. That oh, okay. Cool. Years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I always thought it when they opened um, I was like, this is like a grand opening slash going out of business sale. But <laughs> they actually lasted for like five years. I was really surprised. I, like, I the, first, in there. Yeah. In there. the first time I went, I was like, man, this is like a two year store. I was like, this is so cool. Like, I'll rent VHS tapes, but not a lot of people will. So, <laughs> yeah, Street um, Smart was a little weird because I remember they even had like Lacuna Coil come and do like. An acoustic set at Simon. Oh, I was there. I was like, oh, okay, really? I went there too. Yeah, I mean, what? I was just there to buy comics. I was like, what's going on here? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I was over there waiting in line to like, actually meet them. But, like, you guys were really? Great. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't know who they are. I heard their name. I don't know who they are. So. They do a really great <laughs> cover of that REM song. Enjoy the. Uh, no, no, no. Not the Joy of the Silence. End of the World. And uh, I know it. Uh, oh, uh, what is what it? Is it? Spotlight losing my religion. You're that's it. Yeah, is yeah, it really? Is it yeah. losing my religion? That's, it's a really that's a good great song. Cover. Yeah, they're, good they're, song. they're like a really good goth metal band. Like, they're okay. actually pretty famous. Back more in like, the European states, they're a lot more huge than they are here. Okay. But, like, that's the, cool. the, lead singer, her, the lead singer, Christina Scabia, she's like gotten awards and been praised for her voice. Really? Yeah, because cool. she can read. She reaches really hard notes. She that's has a cool. gorgeous voice. Yeah. So it's very cool. Actually, I like Tradesmark because I was able to catch up on all of my Captain America and Ghost Rider comics because they had all those graphic novels yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I fell behind, I just went in there and I was like, oh shit, it looks like they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> those used graphic novel sales were. Yeah, really they were really good. Yeah. It was like going back in time, though. I was like, wow, it's like the nineteen nineties again. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, so that's where you guys. Giant, like, that, I don't. I mean, that's where I remember meeting Patricia. Yeah. She probably doesn't remember meeting me there. I, I don't. But, but yeah. then, <laughs> he, and this was a time where I worked like four four part time jobs to put food in my belly, essentially yeah. mm-hmm. keep roof over my head. And yeah. I also worked at Barnes and Noble. Yeah, okay. and. Those, and there was a point where I think it was after I had left TradeSmart, Dan was doing a My Gal was on signing yeah. at Barnes and Noble and my manager was like, Oh yeah, this this comics guy, he says he knows you? And I was like, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> well, we, like I know because I working in retail, like you see so many faces all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um but he did well, the signing there, and I was like, oh, hey, let's be Facebook friends. Yeah, well, we I'd seen you at some Mile High Comics things and stuff, yeah. too. Like, there were some of those that we'd, we'd you know, bumped into each other. But, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, but I, th- I don't know. I think a lot of people, like, so did you remember maybe staff at stores? So did you come up to Patricia and be like, hey, I got this comic. You want to jump on in this with me? Or, like, how did, how did that go? How did I was more working on the show. Yeah. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah, and we were looking for somebody else and uh, to work on it. And um, and then just since since she'd been friendly and stuff and kind of understood, understood the, the comic, and and um, we were just like, hey, we need someone that kind of... Because we do, like, a horror host TV show. We're like, we just need someone to kind of help out and, and do, like, production assistance and stuff yeah. like, like a, you know, associate producer and stuff like that. And so... Um, so yeah, I just messaged her and, and I was just like, hey, you never know, because I just like I'll meet somebody like, hey, you seem friendly. Let's see, see right. like, you know, yeah, it, what, where where we can put heads together. So, and so you yeah. guys joined yeah. forces, and I got a pretty like strong following with this comic and uh, with your TV show as well. Yeah, and, um, we'll we'll touch on the TV show too uh, in just a little bit. Um, but so it's just kind of like you guys just kept running into each other, kind of, and you eventually just decided to team up. Yeah. Is, is that, yeah. So that, that's really cool. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that, that's, you know, small world kind of coincidence, I guess you would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, so inspiration, where do you guys get inspiration to write and do your drawing and coloring for uh, my gal? 
I'll let you go. That's a good question. Um, I mean, Bewitched, really. For me, it was more like Bewitched. Also, there was a show that, um, that, uh, oh, forgive me, um, Julie Umar was in. Okay. Before Batman 66 called, uh, called My Living Doll. Where okay. she, it was very similar to the Bewitched and I Dream of Genie formats, where you have, like, this lady who's, like, something else. And so she was an, she was an android in it. And it's actually the place that the phrase does not compute debuted. Okay. Um, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So huh. she would say that, and um, and uh, not all the episodes even exist anymore. So it was never in reruns or syndication because even though the Monsters was like two seasons, they still would air it a lot. Yeah. Um, but My Living Doll was like not even a full season, so it's never had the same wide release. But it's a really good show. Um, and then. Uh, let me see here, and then and then, well, and the title was influenced by a Bela Lugosi movie called My Son the Vampire, so that was kind of where I got like that idea. Um, but it, it's really just um, for me, it was really just having like sometimes it'd be a character that that was derivative of something that I liked, um, but I just was trying to find stories that that would make sense for somebody who was, you know, this. Uh, I mean, she's a monster. She doesn't have to be a zombie. Right. She's a monster. Um, it, that sort of creature these days, it's not a copyrighted vampire character or, or right. something else. Yeah. It, zombie, in some ways, is a catch-all, but it still also has, like, that background. So um, I just wanted to tell stories that, like, for me, if I'm going to write something, it's be probably because I'm working through an issue, mm-hmm. and then I'll find... Of, of metaphor that's why I like horror um, I'll find a metaphor that will help me work through that issue okay um, and I mean I just don't do as many superheroics so the the influence for me I mean I read superhero comics a lot that's mostly what I read when I was a kid not all that I read but that was mostly what I read so um, the influence though is for me um, Archie comics specifically Josie and the Pussycats um, and they had some monster stories that were really good. Um, mm-hmm. But so those, and then on the monster side, I would say not even monster comics as much as just the classic Universal movies and how those stories were told both in blast, black and white, as well as um, as well as having stories that had monsters, but that at that time they were really pushing the envelope and very shocking and. I mean, some of those sorts of movies were still like, like Todd Browning's Freaks that he did after Dracula was banned, <laughs> like in the UK. I think it's since been on, on I yeah. think that's been lifted, but, um, and I know that one's not universal, but it's still the same sort, still some of the same filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so those, uh, the, the universal ones are classic because they had like the standard monsters that we think of, but those tor- yeah. sorts of movies I watched a lot as a kid. And, um, and so taking that idea of these stories that really, really don't have, like Creature from the Black Lagoon was in the 50s, but that's rated G. And there's nothing in that movie on a checkbox that you'd be like, okay, we have to make this, like even today they probably rate it PG, but there's nothing in it yeah. that you'd have to say, okay, check off that box because of this, it can't get general audiences. Right. Um, and so, so for me, that's where a lot of that influence is, is of telling a story that could still, you know, fly under that quote G rating or, or whatever okay. um, and then and then uh, let me see yeah so I mean there's still a lot of I mean probably a lot of music influence as well um, but I guess that upbringing like <laughs> like so Chelsea's best friend is named London and she's pretty much like a mainstream girl like she just dresses kind of like it's a lot of it has a lot more 60s influence like mm-hmm. i just look at things that like elizabeth montgomery would wear okay. um, on bewitched and that's where i get like the fashion <coughs> that i draw uh mm-hmm. but so she just dresses like that but her favorite band's like the undead so we like, <laughs> saw this girl wearing this really sweet headband and in fact where do i have so like i would say like picture of her? chelsea would probably be like Archie, London would be Betty, and Natalie would maybe no. Nat- I, no, no Natalie no. would be Betty. Yeah, London's London, London would be Veronica. Veronica. Or Alexander yeah, Cabot very much. So, like that's this girl right yeah. here, and I guess there they're just like having like this sleepover. So she's not dressed like as, you know, like okay, there we go. Like if she's just gonna go out, like she's 
she's got her purse and she's got like a turtleneck dress but like in the comic like that's to me like but her favorite band's the undead like and then another band i like called grave grave robber is like this they're they're not they're not the most known horror punk band i mean they're known pretty well they have a, a lot of people like them a lot but they're by no means like they don't have shirts and hot topic but like yeah. in this world like they're the number one like largest band like they're the most popular band there is and like this normal yeah girl like her favorite band's like <laughs> the undead so so like that to me that's the setting of the world like like that's I guess that's just how I view the world, but like at Riot Fest when the Misfits played, I was like, this is a uh, different world. I was like, yeah. we've got, and they count the numbers, it was like 60,000 people. I was like, this is as mainstream as it gets. Having a band play for 60,000 people, I know that they're still not really on the radio, and I don't, I, I'd feel weird if they were in the oh, yeah, they're, yeah. they're, not, they're not radio friendly. Yeah, well, I probably yeah. would. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. I mean, you know, they might not have had their song in Scream, and they might not have had like. Like right. the Lost in Space and the Lost in Space movie and all that, but I mean, they're they're I mean, Metallica plays their songs on the radio, so mm -hmm. you know, or they did. I don't I don't know what they do on the what is really on the radio. They'll but, still play. I mean, if you're listening to uh, 1067, they play Five Finger Death Punch all the way. Yeah, oh, oh, 106. I mean, I've heard it now. Oh, it's, oh sorry, 107.1. Sorry, nine, nine, whatever. Who cares? It's the bear. <laughs> it's on a different <laughs> station now, and all they do is play Five Finger. Yeah, yeah I think just by five finger, finger and Metallica. Five finger death punch. I've heard. I mean, I saw their CDs when I was looking at five iron friends. That's a different CDs. conversation. Also, yeah. 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 deciding at TradeSmart. Yeah, I know my but, yeah. uh, <laughs> my roommate actually he used to work at TradeSmart with you, yeah. and oh, he actually got me that added. tag. Uh, <laughs> got the signatures from five finger when we liked them. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I, mean, I, yeah. like old stuff. I just looked yeah. up five iron frenzy stuff, and then I would find. Oh, Five Iron Punch. Frenzy! Yeah, I, 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 I could have sworn I was like the only person in this entire planet that listens to. Them. They just had a huge show at the I Madison know. Pavilion. It was huge. I know, I know, I saw that, and I was, I wanted to go so bad. It was really, really big. Yeah, but oh. anyway, so like when I saw, like if I see something like that, or I see like the Misfits like headlining this festival, and of course they should. But I was like, if they went on tour with this and they hit the road, and even if they sold out twenty thousand seat arenas, like that would be like the biggest band. Like when you see like promotions of them playing in Vegas it's like this huge like banner as big as like yeah. Yeah. Um, or video screen as big as like anybody who's mainstream and huge mm -hmm. um, yeah but and so I'm glad they don't necessarily I mean they're on some commercials like the Ramones are now but mm -hmm. my daughter will be like I saw this ad for an exercising machine and it was playing the Ramones <laughs> like, <laughs> so, That's so there's funny Aww. stuff about it. yeah it's like a treadmill but it's got a Ramones ad <laughs> So anyway, that that's kind of the world. Like, that, to me, like that makes sense. In that in that world, like, you just assume that that's what people listen to. I guess like in that world, those bands would be like, whatever band you assume everybody knows. Right. Um, like Metallica. Like, yeah. I mean, when you don't listen to Metallica, I get, yeah, everybody knows, knows who Metallica is. is. Maybe mm -hmm. not everybody knows who they probably recognize the logos for the Misfits, but not mm -hmm. everybody had could be like, oh yeah, I saw what's that movie. Um, I saw one of those Mission Impossible's, and they had a Metallica song in it, or whatever it was, or Limp Bizkit, mm -hmm. or whoever it was. And I mean, that, I mean, Metallica has some okay stuff. Like, their their guitarist has like a really good horror collection, and I think one of them lives in Colorado sometimes. So, mm -hmm. like, Metallica's cool or whatever, but I don't own, I don't own any of their records. I don't know. So, uh, uh, so we're getting, so we're almost through the time we have for this interview. So before we finish it up, I do want to like touch on your TV show that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so, what, what's the title of that? What's that about? Are you mad? You opened your mouth first. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is that the title? Because we have no, someone. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to talk about it, you don't yeah. have to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, no. So, it's a horror host show, kind of like Elvira or Mr. Science, Mystery Science Theater or Sven Gulli or one of those. Which Elvira is actually in Estes Park today. Is she? What? Yeah. Is she at Estes Park Comic Con? Yeah, we're here. I saw that on <laughs> She'll Facebook be there tomorrow, morning, then. and I was like, "Oh, the Queen." You should is go up tomorrow. tomorrow. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. Uh, I think the full title of the show is "My Gal Zombie Tragedy Travesty." Yeah, that's the title um, of the show. And it's it's really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Our actress Justine is. Amazing. At She's getting pretty makeup. like famous though, like, yeah. like, like. <laughs> I don't know, not like mainstream like NBC mm -hmm. television, but I mean, she's. She's been. She was shared by her makeup stuff was shared by George Takei and that got okay. a couple cool. million views. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then definitely. on Instagram, she has like I don't know what threshold you have to hit to be like, 
Insta famous or whatever. But she's got like I think last I checked was over thirty thousand followers and, and that's um, it. <laughs> yeah. So but anyway, so she she does really good. So she portrays the character. Uh, that's that's her on the cover, like of the of the comic. There. Oh, yeah. Cool. And so she does her own makeup, but that's a really now that's a very simple makeup for her. So she does like some really complex stuff, and then nice. And she she did um, she did like a recent like she wasn't at Denver Comic Con she because she was at a film debut of a movie she did makeup for at another uh, event, and so um, anyway, so she portrays the character, and then we have. Um, and the, so the first season's completed. The second season is in hiatus. It's, well, I don't want to say hiatus. It's in the works. I, I mean, we've got a lot filmed that I just don't have edited. I just need to get down and actually edit it all. All right. And so I'm, it's just there's a lot, a lot of stuff that a lot of stuff going on. That being said, um, so yeah, so we do jokes during the show, um, okay. like that, like she'll pop up in front of it, in front of the movie. Like we take old monster movies and stuff like that, and. Then the first season, every episode has. Uh, if the band didn't have a music video, then I put together a music video. Each one had a. Each episode had a different had a different band in it. Um, bands like Coffin Cats and. Oh Ghost wow! Stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kitty wow, and the I love Coffin Cats. Yeah, they're good. So, um, the first label that they got known on of Hairball Eight Records is uh, a friend of mine runs owns and runs that label, and so like, Coffin Cats have gotten really big since then. Um, and so, like, I have access to everything on Hairball Eight Records that he has the rights to for nice. the show. Cool. Um, and so then I'll just talk with one of the bands and be like, hey. like I'd rather talk with them. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, but I'll be like, hey, we've got we've got this. So you know, we're gonna. I don't want to be like. I don't want to like ask them permission because I already have permission from <laughs> from the label. But I'm like, hey, we were. I'm working with the label. And, I mean, if any band was like, no, I don't want to be on it. But normally we'll we'll talk with them and be like, hey, we were looking at using this one, you know, can right. we get some concert footage? Or I pulled this from YouTube, is that cool? And then we'll just put together videos, and um, sometimes I'll splice in footage like from the show. Sometimes it's only been uh, footage. I mean, like from the movie. Sometimes it's only been stuff like that. Okay. And then we'll do like some original segments and stuff like that. And so. Um, we were airing once I start getting new episodes. See, the first season it was actually kind of weird because I envisioned let's start doing this show, we'll make a season, then we'll start to pitch it around. And after we did like the first episode, which was a holiday special, um, then the Bone Jankler, who's really well known in horror host circles out of Chicago, was like, "Hey, if you just get us regular episodes, we'll start airing them." So, um, so once I, but this time I do want to finish the season and be like, "Here's the whole season." I mean, we've been on it in a lot of places. Because oh. I, I wrote jokes for that um, fairy tale movie. That <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's filmed. She's like, I want my jokes. Yeah, that one's filmed. That one's really good. <laughs> so where could people uh, go to check out yeah. the show? Yeah. Then. Um, we're still played sometimes on <clears throat> Creepy Castle or on um, on or let me see the Monster Channel. I think now that they're just the Monster Channel, and then the, now they're on Roku. We might still be airing. I don't think we're in rotation in Chicago area. Um, I know we were airing in Nebraska for a while. I know we were airing in Wisconsin for a while. Illinois. Um, yeah, Il- yeah, yeah, Illinois oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't think we're because we haven't submitted any new episodes. And but I mean, we'll still be on different rotations. And then we have some on YouTube. I mean, you can go to mygalvazombie.com and find all of that. I haven't just put everything up just for like for free to watch because. To put it on YouTube, I want to have the subtitles, and again, that takes a long time to do. Mm-hmm. So that's the main. There's some episodes on there, but like I to to put it up like that, I want it. I want to do it right. And YouTube, they don't require subtitles by any means, but they do like when they're there. And so yeah, I want to make sure to to, to have that. That and there's so many ways it could get flagged and taken down. Oh, they like, always oh, do. Oh, you're using this Coffin mm-hmm. Cat song. We're just gonna take the whole thing down. Like, Coffin yeah. Cat. That's YouTube is not a very creator-friendly place. Anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, no. It, uh, from what I've seen, it's kind of slowly going into the dirt. Well, one well, of the things that's how you describe it, at least. Yeah. One issue for me was that, you know, because we get flagged, stuff flagged a lot. Even they're just people that don't own the copyright, and they just flag it to try to take your royalties. Yeah. And so then they divert that until you get sorted out, or they put it on hold. So for one of them. Um, we used an audio clip from Teenagers 
from outer space, and then a rapper I like, never heard of. The the song you mean, Teenagers from Outer Space, or no, no the movie. Okay. Yeah, the I wasn't sure movie. which one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then the um the rapper that oh some rapper I don't know who they are they used a sample yeah. from that movie trailer, and then it came up that we used songs we used content from that rapper. I was like, no, this is public domain audio that I mm-hmm. integrated as did they and now they're gonna claim that they own the source material it's just nonsense it doesn't make it's just it's just nonsense and so that yeah. that is another major limitation with youtube is um and so again i could maybe it was also it might have been amazon requires this i think they require sub like professional subtitles and so that was part one um and i forget about netflix but uh but yeah i mean it's available i think i think we're sold out of the dvds but i'll make one day i'm gonna make more like crazy awesome. i'm just gonna make like more dvds like, <laughs> and i will say we film it in the most punk rock way possible <laughs> um like the the first season was in justine's parents basement yeah and dan okay. filmed it on his iphone yeah. so he had to take breaks so he could dump the footage cause yeah because he ran out of room yeah, um wow. and now we have a like a little set in a Railroad Museum yeah, in, in, in the, Yeah. Oh, cool. So. Yeah, we've got like a, a warehouse, but we Dope. we yeah. don't film as, as much as I'd like, but it's really just because um, we're pretty busy with stuff. <laughs> Actually, mm-hmm. Nightmare. We, we get it happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Not, I'd say that most of my efforts are going to Nightmare before Christmas. And the only reason for that to me is because it's just such a great opportunity. And mm-hmm. I mean, it'll be, it's about a two year project. So. I mean, I can still put, it's not that I don't have time to do other stuff, but to really sit down and take a week aside to figure out everything, you know, for an episode or something like that is, um, it's a week that, I mean, I don't want to miss my deadlines on Nightmare. No, definitely. So I'd say first is my, is Nightmare priority-wise, and then second is just the My Girl the Zombie comics. I'd say, like, whenever I'm not doing, like, whenever I'm on a break from Nightmare or I'm kind of caught up, I typically am di- diverting to the the My Gala Zombie comics, and for a while, the My Gala Zombie uh, priority was the was the film. So I'm okay. I'm, I, I cool. kind of like doing the comics more. So then, how about this case? We we can either talk about Nightmare, or we can take just a quick break. We'll come back and we'll jump right back into it. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and take a break, listeners, and we'll be right back. So if you guys are listening, all right, we're back. Yay. From that long break, we took a whole week off just to take that break. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty intense. It's funny. There was some, there a lot some, of things happened. There were some naps. There were some fights. There was a lot back. of fire. There was a lot of fire. A lot of fire. Oh my god! <laughs> so, like, wake up, up. <laughs> Satan! <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, you know, we're talking a lot about like comic books and horror yeah. and inspirations. Mm-hmm. And one thing you mentioned, you know, aside from the TV show that you guys got going on as well. Is that you're working on the new Nightmare comic? That's the yeah. sequel. Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. I just Sorry. call it Nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long title. <laughs> so, it is. But, it's technically Disney Tim Burton's Nightmare, Nightmare Before yeah, Christmas. Exactly. Or wait, forgive me. T- Disney is singular. No, no possession. Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas: Colon Zero's Journey. See, that's why it's right. technically. Just saying, so okay, people, yeah. I'm just saying, some people are like, what's Nightmare? On eBay, people so. <laughs> abbreviate, abbreviate it NBC for stuff. On, but then I'm always, I was always like, it's never been on NBC. That's Universal. This should be NBC. <laughs> oh. That's Disney. And then I was like, oh, it's because of Nightmare Before Christmas. And then some people do like NBX, which I also like because it's like an X for huh. Xmas. It mm-hmm. just sounds like you know. Jason X to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> but so talk about I just that say that Nightmare. So, but this, this, comic, <laughs> this comic is the highly awaited yeah. sequel to the movie. Yeah. And so, what, so let's talk about it. How did you get on mm-hmm. this project, Dan? Oh, very good question. So it's about a year ago. I went to, so I've been to San Diego Comic Con like 10 years. And so that's coming up this week. Um, but last year I went for one day and I'd, I'd mostly over the years that I went, I pretty much exhibited in different capacities every year, um, except for the last couple of years. And then two years ago I did like the standard, like, like portfolio reviews when I started looking for other work outside of just doing like creator owned stuff and things like that. Okay. And so, you know, I went and I'd sign up for those portfolio reviews and they were cool or whatever, but I didn't get any real leads from that. I did have some, some going back and forth afterwards actually with, um, with trying to pitch a show to um, to NBC, but uh, they were in the middle of doing like the uh, 
they were calling the Dark Universe. I don't know what it was. They were going to revamp the monsters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, the so, universal you, monster. Yeah. yeah. So I put together a pitch I was really yeah. proud of and um, for, like, a cartoon show using the monsters. And they're like, oh, we can't because it was in that. But, like, they got back to me and everything. Was like, so really much better than the Dark Universe. They started off with the movie. Which, we knew, yeah, we just I don't Tom Cruise. Cruise. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. But I, I did watch that movie. Um, but so I, I don't know. Like I, in some ways, I wish that they did more. But I guess that's ultimately, I wish there was more that was being done with those properties because I'd like to see it and I'd want to try to be a part oh, of it. Yeah. But oh, it was yeah. so crazy because like they emailed me back. They'd be like, someone at NBCUniversal.com. dot com. I was like, what? <laughs> so, so that was really cool. <laughs> You're like, um, no way. Yeah, that Get was that you. was really cool. Um, but. But I didn't get any work from it. And so last year, I was like, okay, I'm going to go for one day. I'm going to fly out in the morning. I'm going to fly out back at night. And I went for so one day. Off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One day. My flight got delayed. So I um, I spent the night. I literally, like, slept in the airport. Um, so it got delayed. They got me on a flight that morning. And so, like, so technically I was there overnight. So I went back, and then I got to hit up different shindigs and whatever. And then went back to the airport and slept in the, in the, in the, the waiting area. Um, and so I met, I went to Tokyo Pop and I was like, Hey, I know that y'all are, um, I, like, I know that y'all are publishing more and you're putting more stuff out and then it's typically black and white, but do you ever need a colorist? And first they're like, Nope. And then a guy was like, Oh yeah, let me see your stuff. So that was, that was the publisher of Tokyo Pop that I just happened to meet in a, the right <laughs> five minutes wow. during what? the right day when yeah. I've been to, to San Diego Comic Con for 10 years and I that had the, the right meeting. And I've gotten to do other neat stuff for, you know, through oh, yeah. San Diego mm-hmm. stuff, but nothing of this level. And so, well, I mean, this is a pretty big deal too. Oh, it's yeah, huge deal. For it's, me, like, it's huge. Yeah. It's insane, especially like publishing the actual the legit sequel to The Nightmare Before yeah. Christmas because, like, we grew up with everybody like fangboying and fangirling out over this movie for like, yeah. ever. Yeah, I love the movie. It's my <laughs> so favorite it's Disney like, movie. And it probably has mm-hmm. one of the most massive and strong cult followers it does. ever, yeah. too. Yeah. It's the only holiday film that at Target they have merchandise all year round. Like, you can go mm-hmm. buy Jack Skellington socks like today. Yeah. yeah. And you can't buy like Santa socks or even other Halloween socks typically today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. So I told them I had. I was like, "Cool." I was like, "I want to color that." I was like, "I want to color that a lot." <laughs> and and like, so let me color it. Yeah, please so, just let me color it. So I, and it was the story that that um, one of the stories Patricia wrote that had not that there's a visual right now, but the um, the cadaver camp story where there is a visual people can look up though on Pop Comic. That's true. Yeah, yeah. if you guys well, want, we can, you can also look it up right now. Uh, put uh, some of your work on our Instagram. Yeah, if you want. no, yeah. that'd be great. That'd so. be great. So you can pull up the Pop, pop Comics My Guy Was Zombie right now, and. Um, and so you can t- you can look at it. And so what I did was I didn't because they asked me they're like, well, what do you know about different like color schemes? Because Nightmare is really big on the Christmas and Halloween town. So I was like, well, I was like that works perfectly because we had a story that I just we just put out where I had zero blue. I mean, there's blue and green and there's blue yeah. and purple, but zero cyan like on its. I guess there's cyan in those, but zero blue on its own. And then the show they're watching, the horror movie of Cadaver Camp, is only blue amongst the grays and blacks and so i specifically did that to to differentiate those two worlds and so i showed that and they're like yeah that could be cool for a nightmare so i said tell you what here's what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna go home so i'm gonna start scanning in the black and white pages from the nightmare adaptation mm-hmm. that tokyo pop had put out and that disney press had put out before but they had a mini comic that had come out as um a, a, from halloween comic fest the year before so i said yeah. i'm just going to start calling coming those pages and tell me what you think about them <laughs> and so then they, <laughs> so i did and then after a few they're like they sent me the files they're like you don't have to scan the pages anymore you can just do these that's imagine like so... they send you that and you're going Ee! yeah i was like that's awesome i was like these are the that files. is so badass and then yeah. Yeah, you, and you got to this point to be able yeah. to in this huge project to the sequel of this you know phenomenal movie basically because of mike al and because of in many ways there. yeah you know, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's you know so it, you know it's kind of a test to don't give up on your passion. So give up mm-hmm. what you want to do because you never know what it's going to. No, you to. never know. I mean, I mean, I guess if you want to even throw uh, throw us in that example, it's like yeah. you know we've been passionate about horror movies and punk rock our entire life, and so mm-hmm. you know we started this podcast, and then eventually yeah. we started you know wanting to bring bands on here to interview them, and yeah, I just happened to meet 
Joseph and you know Patricia at the gym one day. And Joseph's yeah. like, "Hey, so my girlfriend works on this comic book. Do you That's guys awesome. want to figure out?" It's like, "Sure." <laughs> yeah. Now Dan's here working That's on. Awesome. He's working on Nightmare Before Christmas, and it's just she works on it too. It, so. Yeah, you work. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's just it's just kind of very surreal because it's Keeps just the like of it. I can't <laughs> know, I it's just yeah. surreal because it's literally like the like the the definition of it's a small world. Oh, it you is, yeah. I mean? After all, it's Disney. Comes yeah, back exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Circle yeah, yeah. again. But yeah, yeah Patricia, what, what's, what's, what are you doing for the Nightmare uh, comics? Um, so basically, uh, Dan and I are a team. Mm-hmm. And Dan okay. is really amazing. So when he gets opportunities, he shares them with me. Yeah, I try to get people involved <laughs> with it. So, like, I mean, I've because of him, I've proofread for like... What was it? Underdog, Underdog Pink Panther, Panther, maybe Panther. Three Stooges. I don't remember. I did for Three Stooges. Did you? Yes, you did. You did. Three Stooges. Great, you're gonna get Cody all giddy. Now. Sorry, I love Underdog. <laughs> like I used to read the little like Underdog. Uh, they're really single cute. Single panels in the papers and all the time. American really? Mythology. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because if right. you're successful and your friends aren't, well then, like you're not that successful because you haven't been able to help them out. And I love that mindset from Fat Records, and I love a lot of Fat Records bands. Yeah. I mean, I really mm-hmm. do. Yeah. I really do. Same with us here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so, and at one point, I was trying to get. Al Hefe from No Effects involved the Three Stooges. <laughs> he does voices perfectly. I wanted to do an ebook where he did the voices of the Stooges. Oh my god! Because I was listening to the the ebook of No Effects's book, right? And I was coloring Three Stooges while he's talking about doing like while he's doing Three Stooges voices, <laughs> like in the book that he's reading. Like he's reading the e- the, the, the 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 audiobook. And so I tweeted him. I was like, "Oh, hey, this is crazy! Like you're talking about three stooges. I'm calling three stooges." It didn't. You can read those tweets on Twitter, but it didn't work out. But anyway, oh. anyway, yeah. anyway. Um, so that's one of the things that I love about Fat Mike and, and, and No Effects and Fat Records. And so, yeah, to me, like if if I'm gonna need people, and especially if someone's consistent, and like if you need anyone to do anything on comics other than like draw them, Patricia can. If she doesn't already do it, she'll learn it like so quick. Like, mm-hmm. she's done so many things for comics now, and so, like, I would rather bring on working with her, because I know it's consistent. And don't get me wrong, there's other great people, like Tony and, and Mary, Mary that helped me out with Issue Zero. Like, they're amazing, and I'll totally work with them on any chance, you know, that I can. Like, they're awesome. But, yeah. But, um, but it, and it's, it's good locally, too. It's so, it's so much easier, and then, <laughs> um, so yeah, when I, when I know if I, because I, I would not be meeting those deadlines if she was not helping me out, especially for, like... Like last issue, especially in this one too, because I have to meet the deadline, and it's it's hard to meet the deadlines. I mean, it's a monthly book, yeah. And so I've never been on a regular like I'm in Diamond Previews like every month. That's never been the case before. Okay. So wow. Um, yeah. So that's exciting to me. It's very visible. Um, and so yeah, whenever there's someone that that you can get in, like anytime there's someone to get involved, like there's some people that are receive opportunities that they don't take advantage of, and and that I don't that that I don't get. Mm-hmm. Um, but she takes advantage of <laughs> <laughs> well, and he, she and he, she does well. Like yesterday, the page she sent me, like I was just like, these colors are essentially like I need to add the details, but they were done good. Like it looked good, and to me, that's the goal for flats: is a a flat page needs to look good. That if if you had to publish that, you could. Okay, and, okay. And that's my approach for doing the solid colors. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, yes, was like, this is awesome. So. And it's just, it's really nice to not working in a vacuum. I mean, yeah. Dan and I know each other, you know, and we've worked with each other for a few years now. So if yeah. I do something that's not good, he'll tell me and I'll be like, uh, yeah. okay, like yeah. <laughs> but it's just, I trust his judgment and mm-hmm. I follow yeah, his direction. And I, I, I've gotten to the point where it's like any project I do, I want Dan oh, to be a part of it in some yeah. capacity, whether it's coloring or editing or guiding me through it um yeah. it's just we're a team well a lot of people on comics they're always sh- you know showing amongst their people they know and right. so there's there's mm-hmm. a lot of that's not credited or anything but there's a lot of different influence like that but like one thing that with one of the stories that, that might provide out a zombie that she colored on her own um the one thing was like i think i, I was like ah like i again i don't like to use a lot of blue and I used the, so and much I, blue. Yeah, like the, the, <laughs> the walls were blue. And that blue. The walls, so, the couch. Yeah, really and trying not to make an Eiffel 65. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's that song. I tried, I tried, I tried so hard. Yeah, it's funny. Don't do it. Don't do it. But, I get it. But my question, I was like, well, why is it blue? Because I didn't know if that was thematic. Because if you, gonna, and so instead of being like, right. instead of being like, I've never called, colored the walls blue. So some editors will be like, why did you do that? Like because that's what I wanted to color it, and they'll be like, "No, that's terrible. Why would you?" You know, um, and some people not like that, but some people like that. Like so, Pink Panther, you didn't use the right pink. No, it was <laughs> really it was for Casper. You could use the wrong pink. No, you can. I did. Oh, okay. It was for Casper. I used the wrong pink for Casper's. First, I didn't the the penciler and inker didn't draw a tongue, so like you need to add a tongue. It was like the style guide you gave me. Casper didn't have a tongue. They're like, he, he needs a tongue. So I was like, okay. and this was like from. Not even like well, they weren't rude about it. They were just like, "Needs a tongue." So okay, so I put in a tongue, and then we heard back from the licensure. They're like, "It's the wrong color tongue." <laughs> so, like, he's a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't have a tongue. And I mean, intellectual property is hardcore. It is. You have yeah. to meet that stuff because then yeah. people are like, "That's the wrong color tongue." And if DreamWorks recognizes it's the wrong color tongue, sure, I'll change it. But I, for one, like, I didn't even have an example of what color tongue to use. 
like, <laughs> is it salmon? Is it tickle me so, pink? Is it- yeah, so I think what I did was like, well, this was the color I used for Wendy's tongue, so I'm going to use this color for Casper's tongue. But all that being said, um, so I was like, okay, well, why are they blue? And so we talked about it, but my main question was, like, what was what was the idea behind it? Because if you'd been like, thematically, I want this to be blue, I would have been like, Cool. Let's keep it blue. I just but it since, pretty. Yeah, yeah. And not, <laughs> and not that it didn't, but to me, if part of the narrative is that thematically the blue yeah. fits the Definitely. walls. Because to me, just like Archie, the colors of the walls aren't set in stone. This isn't like, like that stuff's fluid. It doesn't matter as much. Now, mm-hmm. I think that if you're drawing a building or a room it, and it has four walls, it needs to have four walls in every panel. Because there are comics I've read and I've been like, there's this many different doors and uh, walls and they all have a different door. And like, that's like an eight sided room. Like you don't, mm-hmm. unless it's a hexagon store, like you need to like make to me, if you want the story to make sense, if you're going to have four walls in the story in a room or whatever about a walls, like you need to have the same door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause otherwise you're like, okay, if this store's here and this wall has that door, you, you wind up with all these different backgrounds. And so mm-hmm. it's like 10 walls. It doesn't, well, maybe like it's like in Rick and Morty where they have the fake door. <laughs> the fake door guy. The, the fake door guy. It's still part of the commercial. <laughs> so, um, so we're so we've hit. We're at our hour mark now. Are so, we? Oh my goodness. So, but it, no, it, this is great. We we kind of I'm kind of glad that you guys kind of took it over the show. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 and, I, and, I, and I do mean that. I do mean that because we're it's very nice. passionate about what we do. And yeah. We love what we do, and we bring people on here who have that same passion for their own thing yeah it, it's it's humbling for us because not only do we feel honored that you guys are willing to come on here no i'm glad and share you. that passion but when you bring that to this recording and to this episode i guarantee our listeners love hearing from creators Hopefully. that are passionate yeah so, at least the cool ones do yeah <laughs> uh, but, but before we end it uh, i got one more question for you guys yeah but i do want to say that i it's 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 really awesome to see that you guys are a team like you're like yeah. a team that yeah, you yeah, love you you know you love you both love seeing each other do phenomenal things with your careers and with yeah. your work and that's and that's something really admirable and like really like kind of makes you choke up a little because it's just nice to see just because <laughs> maybe you, you know, choke up a little bit. I choke a little bit <laughs> <laughs> but it's just nice to see that you guys support each other that much just because you know I I don't know how chaotic of an environment it can be behind the scenes in the comic you know. Um, uh, in the comic area. But you work for a toxic publisher. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, there's no toxicity between you two. You're like, Patricia's just like, yeah, like, I'm really happy for Dan. And Dan's like, oh, I'm not doing this without Patricia Hellman. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it's really awesome to see that. So I just wanted to say, you know, kudos to you yeah. guys. Oh, I will oh. say, Dan Connor is the hardest person, like, working person <laughs> in comics. I don't care. Oh, no, he's hard. Like, he just comes in and he just had my I, I <laughs> this I is will, the color now. <laughs> I will fight anybody. This man has worked so hard in comics and mm-hmm. deserves all of the good things coming his way. Oh, we agree. Yeah, we yeah, really I appreciate agree. it. Yeah. 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 Um, so my, my last question we want to ask you guys is, Again, another last question. <laughs> you already said last I question. Didn't ask, I didn't ask the question. question. I asked, <laughs> a statement. Yeah. It wasn't that sounded like a question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask you guys is how has horror inspired you or influenced you? Whether it's with my gal or just in general in your lives. Mm-hmm. That is a really good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. See? Um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Same. I just, I See, think, last question and go on a tangent. Because personally, <laughs> horror is my favorite genre. And I think it's just because you can use it as a metaphor for yeah. literally anything mm-hmm. or everything. And when you watch it or read it or experience it, you automatically think, what would I do in this situation? Or what pain is that person going through, that monster going through for them to actually do these really heinous acts? Mm -hmm. And I think it's just extremely thought provoking. And it's also just a genre where you can do anything and it's so creative and fascinating. And you literally spill out your heart Mm-hmm. literally and figuratively <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, and like, see it now exactly. <laughs> so i just i love it like when i got to do that issue where i made up this fake slasher series called cadaver camp where you have <laughs> lawrence o'connor and he was on the drum line and something horrific happened to him and now he's killing people with broken drumsticks um, <laughs> I actually had somebody who thought that was a real movie. And really? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, and he was cool. like, 
where did you find this movie? Like, I want to watch awesome. it. <laughs> because, like, I literally just made it up. That's like, awesome. I'll be writing it. But that means it was believable. <laughs> yeah. Like, that it's, it Maybe had you have uh, calling for some screenplays or something. <laughs> I actually, I, I want to do a cadaver camp no. series. No. Yeah. Oh, that's well. Well. You hear that, that Netflix? Netflix? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so I just, I, horror is the genre I feel like you can express yourself the most in. Anyhow, yeah. Yeah. Can. As long as you're an unhappy person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was going to say I agree with that because I uh, I used to write a lot of short stories and everything back in school and stuff like that. And I still like write, dabbling in it a little bit more. And it's always a horror story just because like, I feel like I have more connection to like my protagonists and even to like the villains in my hor- in all of my stories and stuff like that. So I, definitely, mm. yeah. I feel you there. <laughs> I really like that. I struggle with that question because horror means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, I almost differentiate the horror that I like as I like monsters. Okay. So to me, like I like the metaphor in a monster. I love true crime and stuff like that. I love mm-hmm. I love that. Um, but like I could write a story about like a character influenced by like Jeffrey Dahmer. Could, I mean, not that that hasn't been done. I mean, there's probably more that's like based on like Ed Gein, but like you could write those stories. But to me, like, I like a metaphor that isn't realistic. And okay. so I'm I'm almost, like, I would call myself a monster fan. I'm still a horror, like, I love horror. But a lot of people, that means something so different. And so mm-hmm. I love both classic monsters. And in some ways, um, like, zombies are the catch-all these, these days. Like, yeah. anything yeah. could be a zombie, like, whether it's voodoo or scientific. Um, and so I, I enjoy that. Uh, but those are the stories I liked. I don't know. I related to those stories as a kid. I mean, I liked those movies a lot. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's why I'd say we're a lot of, it, it, but it's really about the metaphor. And that, Cause I've thought about it myself. I'm like, well, why do I like this better? Why do I like that better? And it's because of the metaphor that you can tell. Right. Like the creature from the black lagoon is a really good metaphor. And, um, Dracula and the mummy and Frankenstein and the Wolfman all have amazing metaphors. Um, and you can do amazing metaphors with like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like there, there's a metaphor to that. But to me, it's not the same as if like, um, or like Psycho. Psycho mm-hmm. is so straightforward to me. Right. And it is a great story. Um, but it also could happen like, it probably is happening right now. Just so. <laughs> yeah. uh, right next door. Yeah. <laughs> so, right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if but, you think about it, Friday the 13th all started because of the pain of losing a child. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Who yeah. hasn't experienced that in some capacity, even if you yeah. don't have children? I mean, nieces, nephews, fur yeah. babies. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. so relatable. My son's mm. kind of furry. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> is, is your son the wolf man? Peter, it, yeah, heck yeah. yeah. He's, yeah he's, he's furrier than I am. I mean, not that I am now, <laughs> but then I was at that age. I'm like, heck yeah. So, But Patricia does really good with, like, with the writing that she does, um, what, I think that she takes the thing that she can bring to the table that I can't is for whatever reason she knows how to write young women realistically, better than <laughs> I do. and so uh, for whatever reason, it's true. yeah. So she does so good with that, and so I mean whether it's it's monsters or or horror, um, I think that the the series has shifted. Like not that you don't do comedy, but there's a lot more dramatic emotional resonance in the story as opposed to gags and there are gags too but like for me it was just like more following like a sitcom style and but patricia's really taken another direction um and and even though like i came up with the the first like i was zombie comic like that that essence is something entirely different than i would have written than i would have than I would have even been able to write successfully. And so I don't know if there's anything like even answering that question about monsters and horror, but that's a component that that, that, that you bring that I wouldn't be able to, or I wouldn't think to, because naturally I'm, that's yeah. not how I write. Well, thank so, you, yeah. <laughs> it's true. No, because no, I couldn't write that. I couldn't. No, like, I don't know what it's like to necessarily, like, I don't know, some of the things that Chelsea or her friends relate to, like, like even deciding a Halloween costume, like, if I just like put on a, a clothing, I don't really think about like <laughs> all of the things that go behind it, which I, you know, I think is really good storytelling. And I guess also for me on that sense, I want there to be more comics like that in the industry. I want there to be comics that, that I wouldn't think to write. And I want people to read more comics like that 
and, mm-hmm. and I think that I think people relate to that. So I don't know if there's anything you want to speak to on that. I completely but. agree. So like yeah. I said, we're cool. we're at the end of this episode. This has actually been a really fun episode. It's yeah. been really great. Yeah. Um, where can all of our listeners check out Mike Al the Zombie and all your other works? Mm-hmm. And we'll include it in on the, the internet. episode notes. <laughs> okay. On the internet. So we'll just, we'll just include it in the episode yeah, notes. No. Okay. So, no, um, um, crazygoodcomics.com is is my comics website. It's kind of outdated, but but there's that. My Galva, Facebook.com slash MyGalvaZombie. Um, you can do the... Uh, you can actually follow Justine at MyGalvaZombieFX. Uh, that's the actress we work with on Instagram mm-hmm. and Twitter. Um, and then let me think. MyGalvaZombie.com, YouTube. It's at MyGalvaZombie, and let me see here. And then on, I'm really wanting to push the Pop Comics, which is the website web comics uh, uh, component of Tokyo Pop. Okay. But the apparatus is so good. I love the the app, like the way that it, it it's designed is okay. the best that I've found for us a, a website like that. Like I tried Webtoon, I didn't like it. Right. Um, what webtoon is my wife loves it like that's all she reads yeah um she loves webtoon but but so i feel I really like, like there's like a couple of really good stories on webtoon yeah they're a good one that like everybody follows but then everyone kind of ignore they don't search for other things right. so it's very hard mm-hmm. to stand up in webtoons so right. to speak um, yeah or anything else i haven't mentioned though i mean you can mention your um, personal stuff. i i don't update my my accounts that much anymore but yeah. i would say the main is the facebook page yeah. uh, because it's like we get really excited about like oh we did this eight page story here's the pencil yeah a lot of times like just read it like please just read it yeah <laughs> like probably if you just scroll through you'll find you could download like probably everything yeah. we've ever done for free and <laughs> also on our facebook page we have some of my favorite things that we ever filmed and we did reviews yeah, for the monster cereals like count oh, chocula wow. and <laughs> blueberry and yeah. i get kind of like into the Blueberry's history of shit. it and stuff. <laughs> there's this guy who like buys like over 200 boxes of booberry like we'll travel 50 miles oh. to get booberry cereal and like <laughs> he got a cease and desist letter from Bell <laughs> Bells because he was like booberry so good count chocula is such a dweeb like <laughs> just bashing count you chocula can't, you frank can't, and berry's just the, ripping off booberry yeah it's the same it's house the like you can't yeah. be like general mills you're so terrible but i love you so much <laughs> yeah, so we did those that wasn't me i loved writing those and they were so much fun to film and then we had yeah. just seen like try the cereal and, <laughs> I typically um, have any of those cereals at any given time. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, and right. every, you know, every Halloween, I will pick up me some like five boxes of Count Chocula. Yeah. That's <laughs> the best one. In my it opinion. is kind of strongly disagree. <laughs> oh God, here we go. Well, yeah, really, it's the customizing. It's when you yeah. it's when you start to customize for the different flavors. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where it's at. Yeah. That's you're not living life until you've done that. We could talk about the one that no one ever picks up with the werewolf. Fruit, 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 fruit's okay. Yeah. See, no one, see, that's what I'm saying. No one picks up fruit, Okay, fruit. you know what the sad thing is, is that werewolves is my favorite, and I still want to eat that. Really? No, I, like, I like the flavor of it. It's just, it, well, the thing is, fruit, fruit, and yummy, mummy were not published, were not released at the same time, except right. for when they do, like, the relaunches. And mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just kind of odd. It's like, it's like you get which Maryland monster is going to be there. It just depends on the point of the season. <laughs> oh god, listen, be pre- this has be been a fun episode. We keep Black finding Lagoon. things to just talk about. Yeah. This is going That's great. The next one's so. going to be the creature from Black Lagoon and his raggedy sort of <laughs> uh, I wish. That's probably my favorite Universal monster movie, just, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Just Creature's just, amazing. Yeah. It's a great film. Just don't pick up the like Jeffrey Dahmer one. Domeros. Domeros. Murder in every bite. Ed Guinea Wheats. That would be John Baneo. Okay. All right, listeners. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode. If you want to keep up with anything that we're doing, you know the routine. Come find us on Facebook at Punk Rock Horror Podcast or on our Twitter at Official PHP. Or Instagram, Punk Rock Horror Podcast, hashtag PHP Podcast. And make sure you check out My Gal the Zombie and get ready to check out the sequel to Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll include those links to all to Dan's and Patricia's stuff in our episode notes. And thank you again, guys, for tuning in. And we will see you Friday. 
Right. Woot. Bye. 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 See you Friday the 20th. <laughs>